And here to tell us more about the current impact of massive open online courses, or MOOCs as they're called, is an expert on how research and education was conducted in the past. Jürgen Wren from the Max Planck Institute for the History of Science, thanks for coming on Tomorrow Today. You were telling me earlier that this project at the University of Lüneburg is special. Why? I think it's perhaps not unique, but it's certainly special because there is a lot of investment in the interaction with the students. There is something that is called a global classroom, which involves uh, students in meetings and in interactive reactions to the uh, course offerings. And many of the MOOCs, uh, they really uh, are, one, are more one-sided. Uh, uh, enterprises where information is offered and the reaction of the students is gathered more or less mechanically. But in the Lüneburg enterprise, we see a lot of community building and I think that's important. Why are MOOCs so trendy right now? The technology to offer these courses has been around for a while, so why now? I think uh, MOOCs have become trendy because universities, major universities, have identified them also as a means to market uh, themselves, to put themselves on a global market, uh, drawing attention to their course offerings. And they do also uh, cost a lot of effort. Uh, well-produced uh, MOOC programs uh, require a lot of investments that major universities are undertaking. So it has taken some time uh, to, to establish this enterprise. I think it is uh, well on the way, but uh, it is far from having reached its goals, namely uh, a broad offer of education uh, on a global platform. Because what we see for the time being is uh, selection of a few topics, uh, some fashionable topics, which are kind of teasers. Sometimes it's more like an advertisement uh, than a real course program. Who's the target audience for these courses? I think the target audience is uh, students that might eventually also choose to enroll uh, in the universities offering uh, those programs. But it is also uh, potentially a much broader audience that is concerned with this offering, namely all those that otherwise don't have edu access to education. So it, the potential of reaching uh, young people that otherwise have no facilities uh, to get a higher education is just enormous. And I think this potential is far from being exhausted. You mentioned access to education. In many countries, education is a very expensive luxury and it's only for a select few. Are we seeing a democratization of education with MOOCs? I think definitely there is the opportunity of a democratization, but uh, access to knowledge means also access to a broad base of knowledge. Uh, for creating those, uh, this broad base, we need to have knowledge openly uh, available. That's still an effort to bring scientific knowledge in the open access uh, mode fully, and that would be a prerequisite for really offering this. And the other aspect is we need a localization of this knowledge. Many people in the world have different local needs, and we need to adapt uh, the educational offers to those those local needs. And that cannot be done by a few centralized uh, MOOCs presented by some of the leading universities. We need much more grassroots activities, I believe. Fascinating subject. Jürgen Wren, thanks so much for joining Thank us you. here on Tomorrow Today.